Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you. We worship you. We give you the glory and all of the honor. Your name is worthy to be praised. We humble ourselves before you. And we pray right now, Father, for your will to be done in our lives, but not only in our lives, but in the lives of people that we love and care for that need you in their life. We pray, Father, that you would wake them up, open their eyes to their need for you. Father, we pray for you to save the unsaved, reclaim backsliders, Father. We pray that you would uh, just take uh, those whose lives have been bruised and broken by the enemy and restore them into what you created them to be and do in the name of Jesus. And Father, we are a people that don't have to wait to see it to happen. We are a people that will worship you and believe you for it even ahead of time. We give you all of the glory and all of the praise. Bless our time in your word today, Father. Anoint us to be your mouthpiece, your conduit, and allow this word to give life to somebody's life. In Jesus' name, put a hedge around this place. Bind every distracting spirit and demon. Save somebody in this place, somebody, somebody online. Bring deliverance and breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, uh, Psalm 63 is our word for the day, and uh, I'm going to be ministering through the whole, this whole psalm, these all 11 chapters, all 11 verses of this 63rd book of Psalm, and um, but I'm just going to start off by reading verses 1 and 2. It says, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. I want to talk about how to see the power and glory of God. Amen. You can be seated in the house of God. Yes, how to see the power and glory of God. This is probably one of those che- one of those uh, passages of Scripture that has affected my life in significant ways. Uh, and it's a, it, a, it, a, it affected my life in significant ways because once I learned this particular book and applied it to my life, I had the experience of seeing God's power and God's glory. I'm, I'm wondering if there's anybody here who's hungry to see God's power and glory flowing in your life. Yeah, the truth of the matter is there's nothing like experiencing God's power opening up doors for you that no man can open. There, there is nothing to describe glo- God's glory sitting down and resting in your life in a significant way. Some of you have, have never seen God do the supernatural for you. I have seen God do the supernatural and, and here's how I best know how to describe it. I like living this kind of life. I'm living a blessed life. I love to see God answer prayers even before I ask him in prayer. I love to see God uh, do the supernatural for me. I love to see God, and he wants to. God wants to show himself strong in your life. He don't want you to struggle. He don't want you to be frustrated, mad, upset, depressed. That's not God's perfect will for your life. He wants to show himself strong, guess what, in every aspect of your dominion and your life. He wants to do that. And the text is telling us here, here here is the, 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 the psalmist, here is David, a psalm of David. When he was, when he was in the wilderness of Judah, He says, uh, I'm going to seek God. He says, I'm thirsty for God. I'm hungry. I'm longing for God. He says, I'm in a dry and a thirsty land. How many of y'all know that this is a dry and thirsty land? We live in a place, and and you know what tragic is? So, So many people think that they can be satisfied by what the world has to offer. What the world has will leave you thirsty and dry and jacked up and tore up from the flow up. 
It's a dry and thirsty land. It's barren. It, it won't satisfy you. Shopping will not satisfy you. Look at your neighbor. Find some sister and say, shopping is not going to satisfy you. I feel resistance in the room. I feel tension in the room. The only thing shopping does is give you a momentary thrill. A minute of satisfaction. But it wears off. When you have to make those payments on those credit cards that you didn't charge now, the joy of whatever it is you bought is gone. It's a dry and a thirsty land. But I'm here to tell you today that we serve a God who is so awesome, so incredible, so mighty, so amazing that he has the power and the might to satisfy you without, without charging a thing, without shopping, without anything. He has the capacity and the ability to satisfy you. Look at your neighbor and say, God will satisfy you. Look on the other side and say, you got to look in the right place at the right time to be satisfied. Yeah, God wants to show him, you know, and when he says, when David says, I want to, he, what he says right here, he says, I want to see your power and your glory. That word power means his strength and his might. God wants to show his strength and his might in your life. He wants to show you how strong and how abundant he is. And the word glory means abundance. So God wants to show himself strong and he wants to do it in an abundant way. And that's what God wants to show you in his life. And I, I'm here to testify to you today that I've seen God do the supernatural in my life in so many ways. I, I don't deserve. I, you know what? I'm grateful that God doesn't reward you based on what you deserve. You don't deserve nothing with your nasty self. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't deserve it. We don't even deserve to be here this morning, but he woke us up this morning and gave us the activities of our limbs and gave us a mind to want to come to the house of worship. Somebody ought to give him a praise right there. He's worthy. And, and, and look, 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 all, all through, he does some spectacular things. He says, here's what, here's what, all through this, this, this 63rd Psalm, look at the power of God, what God can do, wants to do. He says in verse 7, verse 7, in verse 7 he says, because you have been my help. Anybody here know that God will be a help in time of trouble? He will be your help. I love that right here there. Uh, 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 then he says in verse 8, he says, your right hand upholds me. That's how awesome God is. His hand will hold you up when you ought to be falling and faltering. God's right hand, his powerful hand will hold you up. I feel a shout coming on me when I think about that. Verse 9, when those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower pits of the earth, God will defeat people who are trying to tear you down. Y'all, excuse me, I want to shout right here because my mind goes back and thinks about the people who tried to destroy my name and my reputation and my ministry. And guess what? After 33 years, I'm still here. Somebody tell your neighbor, they tried to get me fired, but I'm still here. They tried to tear you down, but you're still here. They tried to destroy your reputation, but we serve a God that even though they tried, God will tear them down and hold you up. I feel a shout down in my sanctified soul. And then look at verse 11. I'm just, I'm just walking down through the text here. Verse 11, he says, but everyone, uh, uh, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Do y'all know we serve a God that you don't have to track down lies and research who told the lie or where the lie got started? You don't have to track it down. You just do what God tells you to do, and he will stop the mouths of those who are lying on you. Who am I preaching to today who is all worried and frustrated? But now, I need to tell you what you need to do to see the power and glory of God. He wants to show himself strong in your life, and he, he is trying to give us the, the remedy, the answers, the solutions of what we need to do. And it's, it's all right here in Psalm 63. 
63 is, Psalm 63 is so profound, so powerful. It altered my life. And I, some of y'all have heard me preach this before. It's okay. So if the choir can sing the song three or four times, I can preach the same sermon three or four times. I want to remind you about what Psalm 63 says for those who've heard me talk about this before and recall it for you to reap. If you're not practicing it, put it in back, putting it back in your life. Y'all supposed to say, go ahead and tell us, Pastor. It starts off in verse 1. He says, oh, God, you are my God early. Will I seek thee? Stick a pen right there. The very first thing you need to do is get up out your bed, stop sleeping till noon and 11 o'clock, and seek God early. There's something special about getting up early and getting in the face of God. Uh, somebody say, well, how early do it need to be? I can't tell you how early, but I can tell you that 12 noon is way too late. My wife gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I, I can't meet her with, I can't go with her that early in the morning. And I ce celebrate her. She's a God seeker and a God pursuer. And she gets up early in the morning and pursues after God. I don't know what early for you. For some of y'all, early, <laughs> early might be 9 o'clock for some of y'all. But get up early and get in the face of Almighty God. Before your day gets started, before you get dressed, before you pursue whatever you are pursuing, get up early and get in the face of Almighty God and say, God, I need you to bless my day and I need you to order my steps and I need you to call the shots and tell me what to do. Start your day off early in the presence of Almighty God. Stick a pin. There's point one. You got got to get up early and seek God. Somebody say, get up early, get up early. Tell your neighbor, get up early, get up early. Look to your neighbor, say, get up early, get up early, get up early. Y'all not saying it. I'm waiting for everybody to say, get your behind up out of that bed and seek God. Too many of us are late getting up, late arriving, late going to bed, late, late, late. But there's something special when you say, tell God he is so special to you that you're, you're willing to get up and seek his face. That's point one. Get up and seek him early. And then I want to say number two. I want to tell you, here it is in verses three through five. He tells us, here it is, we have to learn to give God praise. Thank all five of y'all. I think the claps came from this side over here. It's something about this side of the, ch the church. Look at him over, look at, look at him, look at him over there. I, I like this side of the church. They routine, this side routinely and regularly supports the pastor while he talking. Them jokers over there, I don't know what's wrong with them jokers. Don't be trying, don't be trying to get, say nothing now. Y'all late, it's, it's too, it's too, you too late. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you the only one, Tim Thomas, you are the only one. Now they want to be, now they want to be like y'all over there. It says in verse 3, look, look, look at this. Just walk with me through this. I'm finished. I'm going to be finished in just a few minutes. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. There's the first point. There's the next point. You got to learn to expressively Worship God with your lips. I, I've been watching since I came in here today. Some of y'all ain't opened y'all's mouths. You ain't said nothing. I know you got masks on. Some of y'all got masks on and all that stuff. But some of y'all with or without the mask, you've never opened your mouth to give God any kind of glory or any kind of praise. You've never given him any kind of glory, any kind of expression of thanks. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor, he's worthy of at least a praise him or a thank you. Matter of fact, he says, my lips shall praise thee. And, and matter of fact, look at verse, 
Look at verse 5 for a minute. Let me just, I'm going to skip down to verse 5 for just a minute because the latter part of verse 5 says, he says, my soul, well, let me read verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Here, here, if you want to see God's glory and power in your life, you got to learn how to willingly and joyfully open your mouth and give him praise. I, I know some of y'all think it don't take all of that. I know some of y'all have concluded that God don't need all that praise and all that worship and all that loud noise and all of that. Thank you, Lord! I know some of y'all think that. Why he got to say that every week? If you all knew what Tim Thomas has come through in his life, if you knew how he was strung out on drugs, if you knew he had almost lost his family, but God reached out and grabbed him and brought him back to the family of faith. That's why every week he says, thank you, Lord. God brought him out. And guess what? I might not know your story, but I know he did something for you, answered some prayer for you, worked some miracle for you. He done something that you ought to be willing to open your mouth and give God glory and give God praise. He's worth praise. Somebody say joyfully. You don't have to beg me, ask me, cohorse me. You don't have to add, you don't have to tell me anything. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think about where he brought me from, when I think about the prayers he's already answered, I willingly and joyfully open my mouth and give God the praise. Somebody say willfully, joyfully, open my mouth. And that's what the text says here. God, God, the psalmist says, I'm going to praise him with my lips. While I have life, verse, verse 4 says, thus while I live, while I have life, while I have the activities of my limbs, while I'm able, before I get put in a, a situation where I can't open my mouth. You ought to worship God while you can, because you can. Somebody say, expressively worship God. Somebody tell your neighbor, expressively worship God. Give him the glory. Joyfully give him the praise. Amen. Give him the glory. But hold up. That, that's not the only way to do it. There's some other things here. He says in verse 4, thus I will bless you while I live. Here's how I'm going to bless you while I'm alive. He says, I will lift up my hands in your name. That's what it means. I've been watching around. Some of y'all ain't opened your mouth, ain't raised your hands. Isn't God, we were singing a song. Didn't y'all sing a song? Y'all said something in that song about lifting your hands. There's something spectacular about being willing to lift your hands and give God the glory. Okay, y'all ain't got it. I got to give y'all some illustrations. Uh, later on the day, there's going to be some football games being played. Let me come back over here. This is my people over here. These are my people over here. And somebody's going to score a touchdown. And the referee, when they score the touchdown, is going to say, and when you raise your hands in worship, you are saying, God has done another spectacular thing. Touchdown, he woke me up this morning. Touchdown, he gave me the activities of my limbs. Touchdown, I've arrived safely to where I'm going. Touchdown, he wins, he wins, he wins. Hold up. Some of y'all still ain't got it. 
when I was in school, high school, the teacher would sometimes say, whoever gets the answer to this question, you can go out to recess early. And if we knew the answer, and we knew that we knew the answer, let me see. Wait a minute. And if you knew that you knew that you knew, you coupled the raising of hands with a, a, lip, a lip thing, you say, ooh, ooh, ooh. Somebody ought to say, oh, oh, oh. Bless his name. And when you raise your hand, you know what you're saying? I know the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. Glory. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Tell your neighbor hallelujah. He brought me out. Hallelujah. He answered my prayers. Oh, God. And you know what else you're saying? Call on me. I know the answer. Pick me. Choose me. Select me. Bless me. Ooh! Bless me, God. Somebody high five your neighbor. High five your neighbor and say he can call on me. Somebody, somebody's saying, somebody's saying, I, I, but I'm going through some stuff right now. I got hell in my life right now. Things ain't going the way I want them to go right now. But when you open your mouth and raise your hand, you are declaring, listen, I know God's going to work it out. <laughs> I don't know when, I don't know how, but all I know is some way, somehow, He Him. Ooh, I know he is. I got history with him. He's done it in my past. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. He delivered me in my past. He wouldn't abandon me right now. Oh, God. Woo. You know what else? Y'all. Y'all messing with me. I feel like preaching now, y'all. I feel like preaching now. That devil went to God and said, I can make her curse you to your face. I can make him deny you. But when you're in the middle of your trial, in the middle of your stress, but you still raise your hand and open your mouth, you are telling the devil, come what may, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, all the time, every moment, every second of every day, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, bless the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Somebody say, exalt his name together. He's worthy of all of my praise. Hallelujah. I'm just looking.
looking for a few people that don't mind giving him a praise. I'm looking for a few people that don't mind opening their mouth. I'm looking for a few people that will willfully, joyfully, excitingly throw up their hands and open their mouth and say, I'm looking for God to work a miracle in my life. I will give him the praise. praise him like whatever we want him to do he's done it already Worshippers up in this camp. I believe we got some people that are not ashamed to give God some glory. I believe we got some people in this camp that don't care what other people think about you. You just want to give God all of the glory and all of the praise. And I believe God is about to dish out some supernatural blessings in somebody's life. All right. Sit down. I got one more thing to tell you. That's the key to everything.
got some worshipers up in here. Hey, over there on that side, they have come up over here on this side. They dancing, running around. They are some worshipers over here that don't mind giving God the praise. I want to challenge you to make this a part of your daily routine not just when you come to church. While you're walking around the house, have your hands raised and your mouth open. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that you wake up in the morning, early in the morning, and acknowledge who kept you up through the night. Woo! Why you laid in the very image of death when you wake up and give him glory, when you get up early and thank him for waking you up, you are acknowledging that it was him that woke you up, not your alarm clock. It was him who kept you all night long. You could have been dead and buried in your grave, but he kept you alive. Okay, I got one more thing. One last thing and it's in verse 6 when I remember you on my bed I meditate on you in the night watches y'all see that remember and meditate on his word as you lay down at, at night in bed. Some of y'all can't sleep because you've been watching the news. You watch the news at night and all that bad news get all down in your spirit. Regurgitating in your mind and you wonder why you wake up all tired. Instead of meditating on the news, meditate on the power of this word right here. He says, when I, I love this, when I remember you on my bed and meditate, regurgitate. That word meditate means to regurgitate, to rethink, to reponder, to, 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 it's a word that goes along with what a cow does. A cow has multiple stomachs and it, it chews through one, one stomach, uh, digests a part of it, it goes into the next stomach. And, and yet more is taken out. Uh, and so that, that word is, what he's saying, when you meditate, he's saying, take it through and re-chew re, re on it, re-chew on it. See, this word is so profound, it, it can have applications through so many areas and dimensions of your life. Anybody here ever read something that you went back and read it again and you saw something that you didn't see the first time that you read it? Or you read it and all of a sudden something pops out of the pages that you had not seen before. That's how, this is a living word. God gives it life to give meaning to you. And, and this is the part that really turns the key to give you the victory. Yeah, thank the Lord you raised your hand. And thank the Lord you opened your mouth. Yeah, that's important too. But here's the key that really gets everything going. That you meditate on the word even in the night watches. Thank all 15 of y'all. I appreciate that very affirmation of this profound word. Now, now let me close. I'm finished. This is my first close right here. Jesus already modeled it for us. 
he raised his hands on a hill called Calvary. They stretched him wide and hung him high. And he died on the cross so you and I could have a relationship with God. No matter what you've done in your past, he has made provisions for you to be forgiven. Whoever you are, I don't care what you did. Maybe, maybe you, 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 you feel, you know, and here's what I do believe. Let me close. Let me, I'm closing. If you raise your hand to try to worship God, this is why some people can't hold their hand up too long. You raise your hand to worship God, but then you, something poke you in your side. That's the Holy Ghost saying, you know you ain't living right. So you put your hand, you got to put your hands back down. Years ago, there used to be a, a commercial about the Pillsbury Doughboy that gets stuck in his stomach. So, so this is, you young people don't know nothing about the Pillsbury Doughboy. That's, that's a commercial years ago, decades, probably decades ago. The Holy Spirit will poke you in your side, and maybe you tried to raise your hand, but you, there's something poking you say you ain't right. You can get right right now. You can get forgiven right now. Just, just get on up and come on down here right now. Say, you know what? That's me. I need Jesus. I need forgiveness. I want a relationship with God. Just come right now. Come while the blood is running warm in your veins. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. God's waiting with his arms. Jesus is waiting with his arms stretched out wide, beckoning for you to come. Praise him. So proud of you. So proud of you, brother. Wait right there. How you doing, young man? So proud of you. Anybody else? Come on right now while the blood is running warm in your veins and you have the activities of your limbs. That's right. I'm proud of you. Amen. 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 So proud of you. So proud of you. Unsaved, backslidden. You're not sure. You need assurance. Come. You say, but you need a church home. You already say, but you need a church home. Now will be the time to come. You backslid, you need to rededicate. Now will be now, right now, right this instant, right this moment. So proud of you. Praise him, praise him, praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful God. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you, bro. So proud of you. So proud of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. Come on. Amen. 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 So proud of you, bro. God bless you. So proud of you. Praise the Lord for you. Step over here. Amen. Give the Lord a shout for these souls here today. I'm going to wait one more minute. Somebody else need to come. You're not saved. You need to be forgiven. You want to accept Jesus as your Savior. You backslid. You started with God, but you drifted away. You're not sure of your eternal destiny. You want to get assurance. You should come. Or you're already saved and you want to join the First Baptist Church of Garden. Right now will be the time for you to come. Come on, while the blood is running warm in your veins. Right, I'm so proud of y'all coming here today. So proud of you. Some of you have come to get saved. You're going to get saved today. Jesus is going to wash all your sins away and give you a relationship with the Father. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you to a room, sit down, talk with you, and they're going to walk you through that process. Some of you are coming to rededicate yourselves to God. The best choice you could have ever made in life. And by the way, I still believe there's somebody else who's supposed to be down here, but you can come at any time. Just come on. Just while I'm talking, you can still come. I feel it in my spirit. Somebody else was supposed to come, but that devil convinced you to wait. I don't know what you're waiting on, but stop waiting. Tomorrow is not promised. While you have the blood running warm in your veins.
All right, the person is going to take you in the back and they're going to talk to you. Father, I thank you for these who've come today. They have responded to your voice. I pray, Father, that you plant them in your vineyard, fill them with your spirit. Let their faith be extended toward you. Let them have a heart of repentance. In Jesus' name, amen.